over 15 billion liters of ice cream are eaten every year, and that number's only getting bigger. So what's really going on behind the scenes to keep up with that demand? From chilled cream arriving in tankers to high-speed machines adding cookie chunks at just the right second, every scoop starts with a serious amount of engineering. But here's what's even more fascinating. How does air get whipped into ice cream without ruining the texture? And how do factories freeze it fast enough to keep it smooth? You're about to find out here at The Process World. What could be better than the spectacular Baskin Robbins ice cream cone? How about making it a double dip for just 59 cents more? So come on, get that 30 wonderful feeling. Ice cream has been around for thousands of years, though it didn't always come in neat cartons. In ancient times, Greeks, Romans, and even Jews were chilling drinks and juices using snow just to enjoy something cool during summer. That was the earliest form of frozen dessert. Fast forward a few centuries and things started evolving. Fruit ices became a thing, and eventually people figured out how to freeze milk and cream mixtures. That's when ice cream really started taking shape. But for a long time, this treat was only for the rich. That changed during the Industrial Revolution. With steam power, electric machines, and the birth of refrigeration, ice cream suddenly became easier to produce and way cheaper. And that's how it went from a luxury snack to a household staple. But how is it made? Before we get into that, please leave a like and subscribe for more amazing videos like this one. Now, moving on. Every batch of ice cream starts with one thing, fresh cream. This cream is delivered straight from dairy farms in refrigerated trucks and pumped into massive storage silos at the factory. These silos keep the temperature locked at around 4 degrees Celsius to protect the cream from spoiling. Since dairy is prone to bacterial contamination, keeping everything cold from the start is a must. Once it's stored safely, the cream is ready to be mixed with a few other ingredients. The dry ones include powdered skim milk, plant-based stabilizers, and emulsifiers. Stabilizers help the ice cream stay smooth and stop it from forming big ice crystals later on. Emulsifiers, on the other hand, help blend the fat with the water in the mixture and play a huge role during the freezing stage by making sure that air can mix evenly into the base. Then comes sugar and corn syrup which don't just add sweetness, they also lower the freezing point so that the texture stays soft and creamy. Every ingredient is carefully measured and added in specific amounts. Even small changes here can throw off the entire batch. That's why factories rely on high-speed mixers and exact recipes. This first phase lays the foundation for the entire process, and getting it right is crucial. Once all the ingredients are lined up, it's time to bring them together. Now, the mixing happens in large stainless steel tanks designed to handle big batches with speed and precision. These tanks spin at high speed, ensuring that everything blends into a thick, smooth liquid. This is the ice cream base. During this stage, the stabilizers and emulsifiers really start doing their job. The stabilizers help keep the mixture consistent, stopping any grainy texture from forming later on. Emulsifiers make sure that the fat and the water don't separate, which helps trap air evenly when the base is frozen and churned later. That's key for achieving the soft, scoopable texture everyone loves. The mixers are timed to make sure that every part of the batch is treated the same. No hot spots, no clumps, just a silky, even blend from top to bottom. By the end of this step, the base looks like a thick milkshake, flavorless for now, but ready to go through the real transformation. This step is all about safety and control. The liquid mix is pumped into a special machine called the plate heat exchanger. It's made up of stacked stainless steel plates that help transfer heat efficiently from hot water or steam into the ice cream base. The goal here is to heat the mixture around 72 degrees Celsius and hold it there for about 30 minutes. That temperature is just right to kill any harmful bacteria while keeping the ingredients stable. It's a delicate balance hot enough to sanitize, but not so hot that it ruins the mix. During pasteurization, something else happens too. The heat activates the stabilizers in the mix, which strengthens their ability to keep the final product smooth and consistent. By the end of this stage, the base is safer, cleaner, and better prepared for the next steps. 
This is where the texture of the final ice cream really starts to take shape. The goal here is to break down the fat particles into tiny uniform sizes so they can blend smoothly with the rest of the mixture. The mix is pushed through a high pressure valve system at extremely fast speeds. This process shatters the fat globules and spreads them evenly throughout the entire liquid. It also ensures that the entire base stays consistent from top to bottom. It also gives ice cream that creamy, melt-in-your-mouth feel that people expect. And while most modern factories rely on high-speed mixers or homogenizers, some parts of the world still celebrate traditional techniques. In the Middle East, like Syria and Lebanon, there's a famous type of ice cream called bouza. It's made using salabin mastic, which gives it an incredibly stretchy, chewy texture that sets it apart from the typical Western ice cream, though the process is slower and more hands-on. Anyway, once the mixture has been pasteurized and homogenized, you'd think it's ready to be frozen, but not yet. It first goes through something called the aging phase. This step might not seem exciting at first, but it plays a huge role in the final taste and texture of the ice cream. The base is stored in cooling tanks and held around 4 degrees Celsius for several hours, sometimes overnight. This resting time gives the stabilizers and emulsifiers a chance to fully activate. Another big benefit of aging is flavor development. By the time the aging is done, the base is thicker, more stable, and a lot more flavorful. This quiet stage behind the scenes is actually a key part of why the final scoop turns out rich, creamy, and balanced. After the aging process, the mix is finally ready for one of the most exciting stages, freezing and churning. This is where the liquid base starts turning into something that actually looks and feels like ice cream. The cold mix is poured into a continuous freezer, a powerful machine that chills it while also churning it nonstop. This churning motion serves two key purposes. It prevents large ice crystals from forming and adds air into the mix. That air is what gives ice cream its soft, scoopable texture. Without it, the product would come out hard and dense. This step is where something called overrun happens. Overrun is the amount of air whipped into the ice cream. Depending on the recipe, the volume can increase anywhere from 60 to 100%. The more air that's added, the lighter the texture becomes. Less air makes it thicker and richer. Every brand has its own overrun level, which is why premium ice creams often feel heavier and more indulgent. Now that the ice cream has its texture locked in, it's time to add all the fun stuff. Those mix-ins that take a good scoop and turn it into something unforgettable. This step happens right before the freezing finishes, while the ice cream is still soft enough to blend without breaking anything apart. Factories use specially designed feeders to drop in extras like chocolate chips, chopped nuts, cookie dough, caramel ribbons, or fruit chunks. These machines are timed precisely to make sure that the mix-ins spread evenly throughout the entire batch. No one wants a scoop loaded with chocolate followed by one with nothing at all. Once the mix-ins are folded in, the ice cream starts to look and feel like the final product you see on store shelves. The texture is creamy, the flavors are layered, and the bonus ingredients are packed evenly into every bite. Then we get into the packaging phase. In this stage, automated machines drop branded cartons into place, already printed with flavor names, nutritional facts, and product details. Each carton is filled with a pre-measured amount of ice cream, usually at a rate of around 70 to 90 units per hour. The lids are pressed on and an inkjet sprayer stamps the production code and expiration date to make sure that each batch is traceable and compliant with food safety rules. The entire line is designed for consistency, efficiency, and hygiene. Once sealed, the product isn't touched by human hands again. Now comes the critical final step, freezing the ice cream completely. Right after sealing, the cartons are still soft and not yet ready for transport or shelf life. That's why they head into an industrial blast freezer set to a temperature below negative 18 degrees Celsius. This step has to happen fast. Rapid freezing keeps the ice crystals small, which protects the smooth texture. A slow freeze would make the texture grainy and ruin all the work that was done earlier. So speed is everything here, not just for efficiency, but for quality. Once frozen solid, the cartons are ready to go. 
They're sorted, stacked, and loaded into refrigerated trucks that maintain cold chain temperatures all the way to the stores. Whether they end up in a local supermarket or a specialty ice cream shop, they arrive with the same creamy texture and flavor they had the moment they left the factory. And in the Middle East, one factory is turning heads globally. In Dubai, a company called Pure Ice Cream is building a massive $22 million solar-powered production facility inside Dubai Industrial City. Once operational, it will produce up to 50 million liters of ice cream annually, which it plans to export across more than 20 countries. Quite interesting, right? Anyway, here's a question for you. If you could invent your own wild ice cream flavor and see it made in the factory, what would it be? And would anyone actually dare to try it? Let us know in the comments section below.